In the wake of George Floyd, I'd like to do a video about African Americans and multiple sclerosis. And I'm going to show you some very concerning data regarding health disparities where African Americans may actually do a little bit worse on the average with MS and what may be the potential causes of this and what we can do to address it. And I'd be very interested to hear your thoughts in the comments section, particularly if you are African American, please share your experiences with the healthcare system. Now, I was taught as a medical student that MS was a European disease, that mostly white people got it. This is our data from Kaiser Permanente Southern California, and you can see that I'm one of the authors, so I know it's legit. And we actually found that black people have a roughly equal risk of multiple sclerosis compared to white people. Hispanics and Asians do have a somewhat lower risk. And in fact, women who are black seem to have a higher risk than Caucasians. Now, this is just our data set, but evidence from multiple data sets suggests that the old idea that African Americans do not get MS is false and they actually have a roughly equal risk overall, which by the way in the United States would be about one, one in 350, not trivial. Now, there are a lot of good cross-sectional studies looking at African Americans with MS. On the average, they tend to be a little bit younger than other ethnicities. There's a greater female predominance. We know that in MS, about 75% of people who have it are women, which is typical of autoimmune diseases. There's a female predominance. But amongst African Americans, it may be in an even higher ratio of about four to one. Now, the very concerning thing is that African Americans with MS, on average, seem to have greater disability. And I'll talk a little bit more about that. They're more likely to have Medicaid, which is state-sponsored insurance, or be completely uninsured. And on average, they have lower socioeconomic status. Data from the National MS Society suggests that they're more likely to have relapses, and they have a higher prevalence of what is sort of informally known as optico-spinal MS. In other words, a form of multiple sclerosis where there tend to be more attacks and lesions in the optic nerve and spinal cord and less in the brain. And this has been reported to occur in about 17% of African Americans versus 8% of Caucasians. And one study even showed that African Americans have a higher rate of brain atrophy with MS or shrinkage of the brain. Brain. Now, I'll show you some data, both from Kaiser and the famous data set from the late Omar Khan. So the woman to the right is Dr. Annette Langergould, who's done a lot of great epidemiologic research, and she's also my former mentor. And I have a video talking about famous MS neurologists, and I included her. So if you want to learn more about that, go ahead and click the card above. But you can see that African Americans in our data set are younger, age 41.7 versus 44.5 in white people. They have a younger age of symptom onset, 38.3 versus 40.7, and they're more likely to be female, with 79.3% amongst African Americans with MS being female. Otherwise, everything was not statistically significant. Now to the right, this is Dr. Omar Khan, who's also mentioned in the video in the card that I linked in the previous slide. And he's known for having this African-American multiple sclerosis registry. And you can see his data. He did find that there is a little bit higher proportion of women who are African-American, 80% of African-Americans with MS being women. The mean age of onset in his data set was actually a little bit higher, 32.8 versus 29.9. Most data sets seem to show the opposite. The average disease duration was the same. And one key difference is if we look at disease types, you can see that amongst African Americans, 59.7% had relapsing remitting multiple sclerosis versus 71.6% in whites. And of course, relapsing MS tends to be more benign and associated with less disability. So that might be what's driving this difference. And you can see the rates of progressive forms of multiple sclerosis, secondary progressive MS, SPMS, primary progressive MS, PPMS, uh, progressive relapsing MS, are all higher in African Americans. Now, if you look at the median time from disease onset to diagnosis, it was 3.1 years in African Americans versus 3.4 years in Caucasians. No difference whatsoever. And in fact, African Americans seem to be getting diagnosed slightly more quickly, although these are people who have health insurance, essentially. But if you look at the MS severity score, MSSS, you can see that it's higher in blacks, 5.6 versus 4.47. And the time to cane dependency is significantly less in African Americans. They have roughly double the risk of progressing to a cane in this study. Uh, more data, and I should also mention the woman to the left is Dr. Mitsi, Mitsi Williams, who's a multiple sclerosis specialist and also an author, who's one of the authors on this publication. 
And sh they also found that African Americans do have a higher rate of optico-spinal MS, as I mentioned previously, 11% versus 7.4%, a greater risk of transverse myelitis in about 27% of their patients who are African American versus 11.7% who are white, and a greater probability of motor onset, in other words, having weakness as an initial symptom. Now, they also found that African Americans diagnosed with MS have a higher rate of having the antibody anti aquaporin 4 which is actually associated with a completely different disease, namely neuromyelitis optica. So there may be a few patients here who actually misdiagnosed with MS and may have had a different disease. I'm not sure about why they include these numbers. And as you can see, looking at the EDSS or expanded disability status scale, there's a clear trend towards African Americans having greater disability. And if you want to see more information about this scale, I have a separate video on that in the card above. And also, if you look to the right, you can see benign versus malignant multiple sclerosis. African Americans are more likely to have malignant or highly aggressive multiple sclerosis. Now, why might this be the case? There are a lot of different hypotheses. One could be differences in access to health care. As I mentioned before, there are differences in the rates of insurance and possibly the quality of insurance in the United States. Another possibility is subtle racial biases of providers or even overt racial biases. There's all kinds of evidence from other diseases that doctors may treat different patients a little bit differently. For instance, there was a study looking at uh, African Americans that they may be a little bit less likely to be offered cardiac catheterization with certain forms of heart disease for whatever reason. In other words, doctors may have on average a slightly less aggressive approach in treating African Americans. There's also some evidence that African Americans may be more likely to end up with certain undesirable procedures such as amputations for complications of diabetes. Another thing is that African Americans on average have worse health overall, higher rates of hypertension, diabetes, and heart failure. And there's some evidence that MS even though we think of it as a sort of distinctive, unusual disease, the prognosis is associated with other medical conditions to some extent, and having other bad health conditions can worsen the prognosis of MS. Also, there's this thought that maybe because of the history of this country, there may be more distrust of medical professionals from African Americans. You know, if you think about the prior Tuskegee experiments and other issues, they may not be as confident going to doctors or trusting their advice. Also, there could be genetic differences uh, of people who are African descent, and also people who are African American have, on average, lower levels of vitamin D, and low vitamin D is known to correlate with worse prognosis in MS. And I'll address a few of these issues. One is the genetics idea, and I have to say that I'm a little bit skeptical of this, and the reason is because the HLA genes, or human leukocyte antigen genes, which are known to be associated with multiple sclerosis susceptibility, they actually evolved prior to the divergence of human ethnic groups. We believe that we all had African ancestors who already had these genes, so the major polymorphisms of HLA genes are essentially prevalent present in all ethnic groups. And in fact, the main MS susceptibility allele, the gene that has the greatest influence on your MS risk, which is HLA-DRB11501, is actually less prevalent in African Americans. By the way, if you have two copies of this gene, you have an eight-fold increased risk of MS, but it's actually less common in African Americans compared to Caucasians. Now, if we look at vitamin D, it's true that African Americans have lower serum levels of vitamin D, but that's true for Hispanics and Asians as well, but they have lower risk of MS. Also, if you look at the risk of MS and vitamin D, there's definitely a correlation in white people, but amongst African Americans, vitamin D level doesn't correlate with the risk of MS at all. So it doesn't really seem to be a risk factor for MS in black people. By the way, this is data from the MS Sunshine study also done by my esteemed colleague, Dr. Annetta Langer Gould. Now, what about access to health care? I talked about differences in insurance between African Americans and Caucasians in a prior slide. However, in Kaiser Permanente Southern California, we found that the time from symptom onset to diagnosis was about the same between blacks and white. Omar Khan also found the same thing. However, we're looking at people who are insured, so this doesn't take into account the full spectrum of African Americans. And we interestingly found that African Americans are less likely to have the specific diagnosis of clinically isolated syndrome, which is sort of a precursor to MS, although it was not statistically significant. I'm not sure of the significance of this fact. Now, what about the distrust of the medical system?
If you look at vaccination rates, it turns out that African Americans are significantly less likely to get vaccinations than white people. And of course, many factors could play into this. But this is a study correcting for age, sex, marital status, education, employment, health insurance, number of doctor visits, usual source of care, self-reported health status, duration of U.S. residence, and region of residence. And they found that African Americans are still less likely than whites to get the flu vaccine, the pneumococcal vaccination, and the tetanus vaccination. So this could suggest some distrust of the medical establishment in general from the African-American community. I don't have all the answers. These are just some thoughts. I'd be interested to know your thoughts, and I'd be interested to hear your experiences dealing with the medical establishment. Thank you for your time.